Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending May 12th. First off, this is from Ars Technica. DVDs and Blu-rays will now carry two unskippable government warnings. Yes, the FBI warning wasn't enough to uh, scare all you pirates off. And they didn't realize that if you were watching the warning, you weren't a pirate. You actually had bought a legal copy. Guess what? If you go and buy a bootleg copy or download from the torrents, you don't have the FBI warnings. Well, now FBI and ICE, uh, I guess International Criminal whatever Enforcement, whatever it's called, but yes, there's going to be two of these you have to actually sit through. Even though you're the one that's not a pirate, you're the one that gets punished. It's probably going to be rather trivial. It's just another extra 10 seconds. You'll have the one 10-second warning and then another 10-second warning. And uh, some people in the comments below in the Ars Technica article actually joked about it, and they kind of would like the warnings to at least last 30 seconds to maybe a minute so they'd have a chance to finish getting their popcorn and snacks and making any bathroom trips. So all in all, it probably really won't amount to a heck of a lot of anything. But it's just, I don't know how people that think they're actually doing something good waste a heck of a lot of their own time and a lot of other people's time accomplishing absolutely nothing. It just it amazes me at times. Next up, this was sent in by my friend Mick, Bug Splat TV on YouTube. This is a hot water saving system. What it is, it's a bypass valve. Now, I know in the past I've seen the systems where we have hot water on demand where they basically, from your hot water tank, they take and run a, a loop of hot water to your faucet, especially if you have a bathroom that's very far away from your hot water tank in your house. It takes a long time for the hot water to reach, so basically it runs it around in a loop so that the hot water is always just a few inches away from the faucet. That's kind of an energy waster, whereas this is a more of an energy conservation deal. What it is is you turn on the hot tap side, and for a few minutes, no water actually comes out. And what it's doing is it's a diverter valve that's dumping the cold water in the pipes into a holding tank below your house, either in the crawl space or the basement, to be saved for later use. And then when the hot water starts flowing, then it lets that go through the valve without bypassing and it comes out the sink. So there is there is a little bit of a wait, maybe a few seconds or so until the hot water starts flowing. But meanwhile, your holding tank can be used to water your grass, take care of your garden, wash your car, whatever. You, um, I, I imagine the average household may dump uh, 100 gallons or more down the drain that way when you just turn the faucet on and wait for the water to get the temperature. If you add that all up for an entire year, that's probably a hundred gallon savings if not more maybe it's several hundred gallons if it's a large family but anyway this is from redwater.net.au and they're the ones that actually make the product and there's a video of a guy demonstrating the product here um, it's a lot better than the loop system I think the loop system it's it's nice and it's convenient but the loop system that we have here for hot water on demand sure does waste the energy because you have all that hot water circulating in a little loop and this one was sent in by my friend Bill BC. I'll have uh, this is uh, electric bikes, the electric zero bike, and they did a test. And the guy that did the test, his name is Wes Seiler. It's a pretty good test. He went up to uh, Mount Baldy in California actually and spent some time with the motorcycle. It's uh, it's very honest the way he does the review. I mean, it's not all it's cracked up to be. You're basically, I'll, I'll give you just a few highlights of it. You can read the article and then I'll give you the link to the video. But the 112 mile advertised range, as usual, that's the most optimal conditions. You can figure if you're going to ride it, especially a lot of highway miles at highway speeds, figure about half that easily. It's going to go down to half that. And for the $14,000, just like you said, I agree, you're buying a $5,000 motorcycle and $9,000 worth of batteries. If you're an early adopter and you like this kind of thing, uh, probably 20% of the people, if you if you actually investigate your riding style, maybe 20% of the motorcyclists actually could use this and have no problems with it, just depending on your combination of distances and what type of trips you take and things like that. And even more people could probably use it as a second motorcycle. But the thing with me still, it's it's got to be competitive price-wise. $14,000 is not competitive. If I want a, a second motorcycle to have an electric, it's pretty much got to be dead even with another equivalent bike and the equivalent bike to this one I would say would be easily you could find a, an equivalent gasoline model for around four thousand dollars and it would still get you a nice uh, 60 70 miles to the gallon so early adapters might be a good thing for you check out the video it's really good so anyway 
I'm going to tell you right now that I'm going to be taking an early break. This will be the last TDD report for this season before the summer break. I'm taking a break two weeks early because I will be coming back four weeks earlier. If you've watched earlier shows, you know on August 5th the Mars probe arrives, and I'm definitely going to do a show about that. August 5th is a Sunday when I normally post my shows, so the posting of the first show and maybe even several after that won't be exactly on schedule. My guess is I will probably post something on the TDD report on August 6th about that, and uh, everybody keep your fingers crossed. Hopefully it's a very good touchdown, and we have a nice-sized vehicle there on Mars to do some exploring. I hope it also leads to uh, Maybe people getting enthusiastic enough to support NASA for some future manned missions, even if it's still going to be a matter of maybe 10 years or beyond. Still would be nice if we could have them. So take care, everybody. I will be seeing you in a few weeks, about 10 weeks or so, on August 6th. Take care.